All right, I am ready, I think. Hello, everybody. Oh, my hair is a mess. That's fine, I don't care. Uh, hello, welcome to whatever this is. Uh, this is unfamiliar territory for you guys. Uh, don't worry, I will bring you up to speed. Because, uh, yeah, welcome to a little small zoo project I started about, I don't know, a week or two, maybe three ago. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's about three weeks now, yeah. Um, I felt I had ideas. I felt like making a zoo. After doing all the zoo tours that I've been doing, and I've mentioned a couple of times, I've got so many more planned and recorded already. Um, like, we've been to Overloan. We've been to uh, 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 Olimola and Amersfoort. Like, those are the most, the three most recent episodes, right? Uh, I have recorded still Zizu, Best Zoo, Zoo Veldhoven, uh, a small butterfly garden called, called butterfly garden called Small Costa Rica or Klein Costa Rica. Um, uh, there's more. There's more coming. Uh, Blydorp, Plankendal, and soon, like in, in less than a week from now, also Burgers Zoo. Uh, so. <laughs> So many zoos I've been to lately. Uh, I am bursting with inspiration, and I'm, I had I needed something to channel that into. So I started a small project. Uh, this project, basically, the the thing of it is, uh, if I feel like building something, I'm gonna build it in this. But I did want to give myself a bit of a a challenge, a bit something fun, and also to kind of try to take something from every zoo tour into this project. And the first thing that I took into this project was small zoo. Uh, we, we've been to a couple small zoos, um, first of which was Olimöle, which is already up on the channel. Um, and yeah, that is a small zoo. It's kind of a reptile house with a small garden around um, and a couple of exhibits. And I feel like there's more potential there than is currently being used. And I wondered... If I had such limited space, what could I do with it? So I didn't give myself as little space as Olimöle. Uh, over here, you can see this is kind of the size that Olimöle is. And I gave myself just a little extra space. I think we're not twice the size, although we, yeah, we're, I think, almost twice the size. But we are smaller than some of the other small zoos. Like we're smaller than Best Zoo, for example. So I wanted to see what I could do with that space. Uh, I wanted to kind of bring in some, some zoo design things that I've been reading about. I've got this awesome book by Erik van Vliet called Exhibiting Zoo Animals, which I highly recommend to anyone interested in zoo design because it covers so many different topics and things to learn from. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to incorporate some of those techniques, but most of all just building whatever I feel like and trying to make it as good as possible. So uh, I started off like making the kind of route that you could walk, which is just kind of a loop around uh, with a couple of you know shortcuts uh, and started to dot around some animals and making like an you know, African area, European area, Madagascar area, where he purchased a book. It's on Amazon. It's, it's all over the place. It's called Exhibiting Zoo Animals. I'm sure you can find it. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think this is North America, South America, uh, and then here I've got like Asia and Af uh, Australia. Um, yeah, because of course there's a lot of animals I haven't really been able to build for in, because my main zoo is a recreation. So I'm kind of tied to whatever that zoo has. So um, that's why I kind of jumped in with like South America, this and that. and just a bunch of animals that never been used, uh, but also in Africa area, because I had a couple of cool ideas. Um, now, I did throw in a lot of modded animals into the species, uh, which of course we don't really have anymore, so I might rethink a lot of that. Um, and also, all of these exhibits are now empty, uh, except for the meerkats. <laughs> but the problem with the meerkats is that uh, what I built over here heavily relies on the free build mod, so I can't really build 
in this area anymore until that is fixed. So yeah, that's why today I moved over here, starting a new thing, thing that I've also been really excited about. But let's quickly have a look around here. So uh, over here is going to be an African aviary with a bunch of African birds. I'm thinking some flamingos. Um, we can imply hammer cops, which are one of my favorite African birds. Um, and also uh, scarlet, uh, no, sacred ibis um, would be a really nice addition here. Uh, and most of that is probably going to be implied. A couple of them have moths, uh, so it, we'll see when we are able to work here again. Um, but the concept of the aviary has evolved over time a little bit, and I've started taking inspiration from uh, Plankendal, which is a zoo in Belgium. Uh, and they also have these little African huts that you go through to enter uh, the aviaries, which I really quite liked. Um, so that's what we can see over here. And then over here we have a little bridge, because uh, there's like a, a river going through that aviary, going out of it and then into this little pond, which uh, I have, uh, I had some uh, little pond turtles in, which was a really cute little mod. There were these tiny, tiny little turtles. But yeah, they are gone. Um, but the pond remains, <laughs> if we ever get those turtles back, we uh, will. Uh, here we have another one of those huts, which I plan to put an elephant through in, but even when I did have the mod, it wasn't really working because it couldn't move around in here at all. Uh, but an, ele an elephant shrew doesn't need that much space, so it's kind of eh, uh, whatever. Uh, and then over here I had this fun little dick dick enclosure, which I actually struggled with a lot. This was like the third version of it. Um, at first I, I, I had a lot of different shapes for it. But I mainly struggled with the fact that Dick and Dick are, of course, very shy, so you don't really want to have too many viewing areas. Um, and I wanted to do something interesting, uh, which I think I've now achieved with the habitat going up like this. You've got a really nice view. Um, and a really nice, natural-looking habitat. And then the highlight of this area is definitely um, this over here, which was a striped hyena habitat. And you've got... If we go into explore mode, uh, you've got a ha habitat immersion over here with the meerkat habitat behind there. So you can, if you're lucky, let's see if we might spot some. <laughs> we can spot the keeper, but if you're lucky, you can see some meerkats walking over there as well, uh, which would be really cool if they did. From over here, you can kind of see the wall in between. Gotta hide that a bit better. But yeah, we're not going to work on any of this for the time being because it, it doesn't work. But yeah, over here you can definitely see some big spare inspiration uh, with the way I've, I've made this fence and stuff. But yeah, you can go up here and then you've got a similar kind of immersion where you don't... Unless you really go up to the fence, you don't really see the wall between the two habitats. So you've got like the meerkats and then the hyenas over there, which was really cool. And then down here... We've got a little underground viewing for the meerkats, which I'm also a really big fan of. Like the fact they they can actually get in here, they can actually use these these sheltered areas as well, which is just super cool. <laughs> what is that thing doing? <laughs> Whoops! Uh, I don't understand how people have managed without a few bullets. Yeah, now that I've don't have it anymore, I realized just I forgot how terrible the game was without it. Uh, oh yeah, I also put some snakes in here just to fill up this uh, space a bit more. But yeah, then other ideas I had, which I can't really work on right now because of things being broken. Um, but over here, this is an idea I got um, from um, the Olimole. Like, it's not a thing they have there, but it's a thing, it's an idea I got from their exhibits, because they have like an ocelot um, uh, a, a serval and a carousel, caracal? I'm not sure how you pronounce that one. Um, and I was like, oh, what if you made like an, a, a group of exhibits where it's like the feline river or whatever, and it shows going from like a, a tropical cat to a savanna cat to a desert cat, and you have like a river 
going through all of their habitats and then once you get to the desert cat it's going to be like an, a dried out river and stuff um, that was the concept here but yeah the mods are now gone and so is my motivation for it so we'll see in the future but today we are going to look at this over here which is kind of the south america house uh, which of course is heavily inspired by uh, my favorite area in zoo park overloan uh, which i've got over here uh, i've got my own video of it um, so if we go to like this point in the video um, we will enter it and uh, this is madidi um, or at least that's what the entire area is called the building is just a south america house but yeah You've got this indoor area with a bunch of different habitats. Uh, you've got the Tamandua, you've got Spectacled Cayman, uh, you've got uh, over here, uh, you've got a Spurred, uh, no, Red Footed Tortoise, I think is the name in English. You've got a Capybara and a Giant Anteater habitat. And there is a walkthrough area uh, over here with sloth, white face sake and gold lion tamarind. So my initial plan for this building was spectacled caiman, uh, tamandua, uh, gold lion tamarind over here and whatever else I had space for <laughs> pretty much because it's it's a, it's smaller than the real life one I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah that plan um, now that we don't have any mods anymore, I'm kind of scrapping the Tamandua and the Gold Lion Tamarin. So instead of the Tamandua, I just did the same as Overloan. Uh, we got Capybara with a giant anteater over here, which uh, are enjoying each other's company. And this is what I started working on uh, this afternoon. So we already have a nice little rock wall with some tropical things on top. Um, and I planned out the rest of the building as well. So you're gonna come in over here. There's gonna be this little viewing deck for them. And then you're gonna be able to go up. Uh, there's another view of the capybara as well as a green iguana. And now I have the uh, no exhibit border mod, which I don't think I necessarily really need here, but I think it's nice to have. We can actually increase the height of this a little bit so that you're bit more up to the viewing point. I'm going to have to check if that interferes with those walls too much though. Let's have a look. Oh, we also got to lower this a little bit by the looks of it, but seems... Yeah, okay, wait, let's lower it just as much as we need to for it not to stick out of the roof. Got one piece of bamboo sticking out over there. Let's lower it. Just a little more. There we go. Then we'll make that work at some point later. Oh, I didn't split the roof. Uh, oh, come on. By the way, if you're uh, if you're listening closely, I finally, <laughs> I think the past few streams I did, even though they're forever ago, I kept being like, oh, I forgot to update my music again. I forgot to update my music again. Finally did. I, uh, I actually took each of the in-game speaker tracks and saved them separately. So I just have a list of all the tracks in the game that I like and it's shuffling through those. Uh, sadly, the volume of them is different than the in-game soundtrack. So I did have to take that stuff out but I think it's nice because this is a bit more unique music um, actually I'm not gonna do that I'm, I want to move this because instead of the gold line tamarinds I thought a nice addition to this place might be uh, the Galapagos giant tortoise oh let's look at Odikus his Madidi inspired build there it is. Oh, that is a bit bigger. Yeah. Looks, looks cool though. Yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm really forcing myself to uh, to be in the space. So you finish it before the DLC, 
don't want to add the new animals, understandably so. Yeah, I actually planned out all of this um, before the DLC. I should close my window, there's a lot of noise outside. Wait. There we go. Sorry about that. I forgot to close it. Um, yeah, I actually planned this entire area out before the DLC was announced, but I uh, surprisingly <laughs> managed to get uh, the Red Crown Crane, the Otter. I avoided the Capybara. I did have the Spectacled Cayman, um, which I considered doing a different uh, kind of Crocodilian uh, because I didn't want to completely copy Medidi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when the Spectacled Cayman got added, uh, so wh what did I just say? The spectacle Eamon got added? <laughs> what? When the spectacled Cayman got added, uh, I knew for pretty sure that I wanted to use him, so... Um, but yeah, um, I want this area to be a, a Galapagos giant tortoise habitat. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, we could take some inspiration from um, both Amersfoort and... Um, Oh, am I... I don't know if Eamon is making a stupid joke or not. <laughs> oh, okay. He's making a stupid joke. Good to know. This is normal. Eamon, the, the video we recorded together, listening back to it, I said so much stupid stuff. I said last... Uh, I said yesterday's video instead of last week's video, uh, and that was only... That was only the example that I could actually catch. I'm sure I said a lot of stupid stuff in that video. But yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we can take some inspiration from uh, both Amersfoort and uh, Blydorp I've been to recently. And one of my favorite areas in Blydorp is the Galapagos Giant Tortoise Habitat. Because uh, the viewing area they made for it is this, uh, this hallway that they've decorated. I'm actually just going to show it because I've got the footage right here somewhere. Um... Don't look at that, those are spoilers. Uh, let's see, Blydorp. Uh, now, this is five and a half hours of footage, so I'm gonna have to look a little closely at where we're supposed to be. But I think it's around here. Oh god, that is so loud and not where we're supposed to be. I should have muted that before I click the next thing. Okay, this is it. Sorry about that noise. That is very loud. Um. Is it even possible to make it better than Beeksbergen? I, I, I doubt it. Um, oh yeah, and going to the Beeksbergen tomorrow, any tips and things I just can't forget? Hmm. I'm not sure what the answer for that. Like, for, at this point, I've just got my regular route, which is going counterclockwise. Um, and you can just do the entire zoo and see pretty much everything. Uh, I would always just go inside of the crocodile area. For some reason, people tend to forget that one uh, pretty easily. And don't forget the edge of Africa, because that one is a little bit separated off. But you're, if you're in the back of the zoo at Congo Square, there's another area behind it where you have a walkthrough lemur and African penguin area. Uh, but anyway, over here, this is the hallway I mentioned. So this hallway is themed after uh, the HMS Be Beagle. It's the beagle, right? Um, and you might miss some of the direction signs when walking counterclockwise. But it was the mandatory walking route during COVID. So I feel justified in saying it's the ideal route. Um, but yeah, this hallway is, is themed after the HMS Beagle, which is the uh, the ship that Darwin uh, took to on his journey around the world. Uh, in which he discovered, of course, uh, the Galapagos Islands and the whole theory of evolution kind of originated. So they made this this ship interior hallway, which is the viewing area of the Galapagos giant tortoises, which is so freaking cool. I absolutely love this. And uh, I, I really want to um, incorporate that into this area over here as well. So this could be like a little ship hole. Um, <laughs> God damn it, even. <laughs> oh, he's just here to roast me. Um, 
But it might be a struggle to recreate that desk. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Isn't that part similar to Owl Hunts? Uh, I have never been to Owl Hunts. It's on my list. Where did all my capybara go? Oh, they must have got they must have gotten boxed up. Um, yeah. So. Um, people are making fun of me on my own stream. Uh, but yeah, I want to move this uh, this little ramp over here because it was taking up a lot of space of uh, the Galapagos giant tortoise. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make a two meter ramp like right around here, I think. Maybe actually make it three meters for now. Oh man, I missed a free build mod so much. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we'll make that ramp like so, and then we'll just... Good thing I still know how to do it the old-fashioned way. But... It was definitely easier with free build. Okay, that's a staircase. I don't want it to be a staircase. Let's go like this. What we could actually do... Uh, do we have space for that? What would be nice to do, maybe, is put like a staircase over here and then a ramp on the other side. <laughs> Thank you, Even. Uh, Alright, so let's see if we can actually achieve that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Put that there. Then we're gonna put this here. I'm going to put a staircase on this side. There we go. Ah, oh, nice. That actually perfectly sets up the path for that viewing area as well. Um, okay, now I ruined it. Uh, will this... Oh, that will work. Kind of. Okay, this needs to go. Oh, that won't connect up. Do a build off to get her against Zoof and Lighter. <laughs> I, I, that's daunting. I don't know. Like, I, I'm pretty confident in my skills, but they have brought it to another level. That's true. Yeah, we we are gonna build that. Whenever you get me started on that. Uh, all right, let's do it like this. Please connect. All right. Yeah, true. <laughs> he did. But still, they made the lady designer um, react to font piece signs for the first time. So that was fun. Now, we've got this awesome little ramp, but it's way too steep. That doesn't work. Uh, so I'm not actually sure if this is going to work at all. We might just do something like this. We might just do a little garden thing over here instead. Gonna have Mike Sheets over for a garden rescue. <laughs> Alright, that seems to almost work, so let's see if we can get that to behave how we want it to. Okay, my, uh, my moat is interfering with my paths. Let's see. Oh, that would be perfect if it wants to connect. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna do. Speaking of mic, we're just gonna do some mic strategies here. 
like so. Get some some smooth pathing and then ruin it. All right. Ah, almost. Like that last part is just just a little too steep still. Um so let's try that again. No. Let's actually go up to the glass here so you have like an extra view of the outdoor area. Because I was kind of missing that. I didn't really have a, an outdoor view. Um, and we will go down a bit more once again. Uh, let's do it like that. And let's see if this wants to maybe work. God, don't you love not having the free build mod? So much fun. Such a fun little challenge. Uh, no. Bad game. No, no stairs. Please. Hmm. That is almost what we want, but not quite. No, I think what I'm going to do is... It did not like, take long for this to become a struggling with pathing stream. I think I need to make this a little steeper, actually. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't regret not doing the pathing of my new gorilla area yet. Okay. Uh oh, yes. Okay, I think I think we're almost good. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Get rid of that. Why? <laughs> we are so close. Okay. All we gotta do is... Crap. All we gotta do is make this a 3 meter path, I think. Put it, like, over here. And then see it not work. Crap. Hmm... Nope. So close. Okay, wait. Two meter over here. Nope. See now. It's a fetish to struggle yourself with paths. It feels like it. What kind of sick, twisted person would take enjoyment out of this? Oh, okay, wait. I thought maybe if I managed to place one... 
Yeah, this is not gonna work. Okay, we're so close though. <laughs> that's the frust that's the frustrating part. Like we're we're this close. I'm actually gonna just um I'm gonna put it like this. And there we go, like that. And now we have slightly more space over here, maybe. Okay, that's slightly better. That's almost good, I would say. Um, but how do we make it actually good like that? Okay, it's still not perfect, but it's better. I think this is something I could work with. Is this a queue? This is a queue. Okay. Wait, I'm gonna do. This I actually didn't want to wait. Didn't want to get rid of all of that. I didn't. <laughs> Hello, gecko boy. Uh, uh. Mm, yeah, no. Do we say good enough? I think we do. Wait, how did I do that earlier? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, we were so close. This. This is how we did it. But what if I... Yeah, see, that's... That's the problem. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm taking it. Good enough. We'll make it look better, maybe. You just gotta get a little, like. <laughs> okay, so you're in a wheelchair, right? You, you make like a, a Tokyo drift here, and then you get a running start to get up to the first bit of the thing. And then, then you're good. Then you've got a nice little stroll. And make sure to turn on your brakes while you're viewing the Galapagos <laughs> turtles over here. So you don't uh, roll back down. <laughs> and you're good. And um, while a wheelchair is blocking the path, everyone else can take the stairs. Perfect. Alright, so do we keep this thing like this, or do we just make it this? I think keeping it like this might actually be smart. That's a little too much, though. Now, the entire reason we did this was to create space, so let's create space. Because we need it. I mean... That's the nice thing about it being a smaller zoo, is you're also not going to have like a million visitors. So you can kind of count on a little thinner paths and stuff like that to actually work. What are you... Why are you here? Well, thanks for trying out my path, ma'am. I appreciate it. Why, why don't you move? Are you stuck? No, it can move if it wants. The only reason I bought this one because his name was Jose. And I love that. He is a treasure. I want my capybara back inside. <laughs> I want to see them use the, f the fountain. It's the only reason I bought this DLC. Do it. Yes. Oh, we're sp the game's on speed up. Oh, they lie down as well? I thought they only had the sitting animation. 
They have multiple animations for this. That's actually really cool. That is amazing. So yeah, um, this is pretty much, I don't have any doors for the animals yet, but this is pretty much straight up uh, my DD. So if we look over here about, I think, I've got the ant eater. Yeah, you can see that door over there. It's pretty much exactly what I built here. So yeah, uh, it just looks nice. It's, it's, it's fine. All right, so I think layout wise, we are almost done. I actually am going to put up uh, my Amosford view. I hated the time scenario, only played for the golden cap bar. Oh, I don't even care. Um, let's see. We're going to go to Overlone Amosford. Let's try to find the. Uh, the things, the Galapagos, or will it, no, these were the algebra giant tortoises, but I mean, same thing, really. Let's see, what kind of barrier do we have here? Yeah, it's pretty minimal of a barrier. We got a little glass thing over here. Don't think we're going to add anything like that. Oh, you can just go over the glass as well. Yeah, so you got a very minimal barrier is enough for these. So that should be fine then. Um, all right, and the only thing we need to think about for a moment is where the hell do we put the habitat gate? Um, and I think there's gonna be a moat over here, which I should probably actually just kind of start digging out perhaps. Um, but yeah, that's, I did that with pathing because I was just drawing things out. Um, I think. So what are you making exactly now? Everything at once. I'm going from all over the place, but we are making a South America house with giant ant eater and capybara over here, which will have an outdoor area over here. Uh, we have the spectacled caiman in here, which I think is big enough. It's actually, I think it's quite a sizable habitat, even. Uh, and we're going to have the Galapagos giant tortoises in here. And then they'll have their outdoor area over here. Which they'll need during the winter. So, yeah, what should we get started with first? Because... I think I, think I want to get the habitat gate in because then we have kind of all the important things in place and we can just get to just making everything. So let's see what we can get away with for these guys. So we can actually, I think we might be able to get away with putting it over there. So let's try that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a null barrier. Wait, let's make that a bit larger. And we're gonna get rid of this. And also the path that we just created. And we're gonna do a hidden barrier, of course. Or a hidden habitat gate, is what I meant to say. So we're gonna just put that on the ground like so. And then we're gonna put that over here about. And I think that should be fine. So let's go ahead and make a little area for them. Do we include this? We can include this. Give them a little bit more space. They are already quite limited. We already took away quite a lot of space with our ramp over here. Uh, actually, this is part of their habitat. So let's include that. Uh, we'll think about how we make the mode. Th do they get stopped by a mode, actually? Can, can Galapagos giant tortoises swim? Maybe we should look at a husbandry manual. Uh, giant tortoise. Uh, husbandry manual. Are you making this zoo to the same scale as Bakes of America? Uh, no, we're making this one-to-one. -one, but it's not a recreation, so it's just... Thing. We are making it small though, so I don't know. 
I'm just... I like making things small. Uh, list of managed care. Husbandy practices. Let's see. Diet, enrichment, breeding. Nope. That's useless. Reptiles, brandy manuals. Turtles and tortoises? Gee, this is... Do they even have collab? Oh, they do. ESEA? They say to contact someone. Wait. What is this? Go to download. Crap, they don't have anything. They can swim? Well, shit. I mean, but they have, like... They can swim? I don't know why I'm surprised by that. Giant? They don't even have one for the Eldebra giant tortoise. Alright, okay, we'll go off to the Zoopedia. <laughs> Whatever. Am I... Oh, we, we're filtering South America. Wait, what does the game say? Oh, posted the ant eater habitat on Discord. I'll have a look. Ooh. Without reference, that's pretty good. Like, you've got the same sort of thing going on. Nice use of the murals as well. Got some heating, like ventilation things. I like this. Like the... Oh, yeah, of course. It is kind of a recreation, yeah. With all the water and stuff. Really nice. Uh, they can't swim... Oh. <laughs> Well, okay, we'll just put a little barrier. They live on a bunch of islands. Not surprised. <laughs> hmm, okay. Yeah, they can't swim as well as turtles, but they do swim. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll probably have, like, a little... thing. We'll think about it. Probably put some kind of barrier. Uh, you're gonna join the Discord? Feel free. Feel free. It's not super active, but we have our little chats every now and then. Um, yeah, we'll see how we keep them in then, in the outer habitat. Uh, we'll probably make use of some kind of steep slopes by the side, like, of the escapes. Just need to make... Like, we can get them... We can keep them out of this stuff pretty easily then. Just need to think about how we will keep them off of the other island of the capuchins. But we'll see about that later. Um, for now, I, I'm kind of feeling the, uh, the Cayman habitat. I kind of want to work that out. So we're going to go ahead and for now, I kind of want to send him to the trade center. Uh, hello. Just go over there, please. And we will uh, go and see what we can do around here. So f let's start off by lowering this stuff down. And then actually lowering everything else up. Because I want this to be a bit taller, I think. Not to have them be able to escape. Uh, and let's actually go to super overload once again and have a quick look at the other side of the Cayman habitat over here so we're gonna skim through this real quick yeah I did a pretty bad job at recording the building to be honest I was a little distracted by all the animals but I think yeah okay so that's a pretty low sort of barrier for them I guess they're not as good at climbing as some other um, animals because Ebens told me that a lot of crocodiles love to climb 
Well, yeah, this looks pretty fine then. Oh, I wish I hadn't come out there. Alright, let's see. Oh man, this is such a bad recording. I'm angry at myself. Uh, what's the name of the Discord server? I think it might be in the description. I mean, you, you made anti-climbing for your saltwater crocodiles. Well, not me specifically. But in your videos. Um, let's see. Is, is, the, is my Discord thing still in the description? I could also just put a link in the chat. Actually, that might be easier. Let's see. Copy. Let's see. That should do it. Um, all right. Well, I think this should be fine. So we're just going to get our same sort of mud walls as we have over here using the faux pieces and we will put them around so i have been using these pretty heavily around the zoom we saw them in the uh, the meerkat habitat as well but they look so nice and uh, let's put them like this as well. I might increase the height of that just a bit more to actually cover that. kind of don't like it to be one giant window like it is now. I kind of want to at least break it up into two. So let's try to do just that. And create something like this maybe. Uh, I have to use this piece more often. Yeah, it's really versatile once you get a hang of it. I It took me a while to get good at actually creating like proper walls with it like back when I the sun is starting to block my screen a bit wait uh, back when I f first tried this in oh that only makes things worse well we're going dark um, back when I first tried to use this technique in Tarmashadi I just gave up and asked Haribo if I could use his so I just stole them from his zoo, basically. Because he was one of the first to use them in this way. Which was before people started using them for like any kind of mud wall. Truly a pioneer. Now in Overloan... Um, if we go to like here, we'll actually see that they don't even have uh, like there is some of that rubbery stuff around the glass. But if you look over there in the corner, there is actually just the, the glass just sticks inside the rock, which really caught my eye back when I saw that because I always figured you'd need some kind of glass holding thing. <laughs> Um, that probably just makes it easier to repair and probably cheaper so we might actually add a little black trim anyway using some foam pieces or something but yeah I'm not really sure what I'm going for with this zoo like budget wise uh, like I want to say oh it's a small zoo it's got a low budget but I also just kind of want to build whatever I want so I'm not really tying a budget to it. We can just say that this zoo, <laughs> just like Blydorp, this zoo has a very uh, dedicated uh, fan base that 
are donating <laughs> large amounts of money. Like, the zoo is very popular with the locals who are actively contributing to the expansion. Try to do something a bit more fancy with the bottom here. Like maybe a bit more rocks or something. Maybe something concrete, because you probably want to create something for like little kids to sit on to get up to the glass. I'm actually not sure how tall I made this. Let's look. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, some tall adults might have to crouch down a little bit, but yeah, even if you're a kid, you actually get a really cool view of them. Uh, sometimes you gotta throw realism out of the window either way, because at the end of the day, it's still a game, and sometimes you just want to make something cool. Exactly. And that's kind of what this project is. Do my box list exhibits still work? Yeah, I never, uh, I never touched them, and they're still here. I didn't even have to reinstall them; they're just still there. Same thing goes for uh, like Lion Rider made a mod for me that fixes the plank bug, which is still in the game, and that also didn't get overwritten, which was really nice. I think I'm gonna put some of the Australia planks on top of this. Yeah, oh yeah, of course, it needs to be updated with the a crested newt. Actually, never looked at what that thing looks like in game myself. Should we? Ooh, I just realized we have exolotls now. Would you have to make a boxless version of the uh, new species mods as well, or would that use the boxless version? Now that they've uh, cracked the code on. Uh, New species exhibit animals. <laughs> no idea, we'll have to see. <laughs> Eben, it's your mod, you gotta be on top of this. It's almost like you don't care. You're not going to use the wetlands one, so you, so you have to do it anyway. There we go. That looks pretty good. It looks a little repetitive with this, but eh. I'm sure it's fine. Alright, let's put on some Australia planks. I think that will look pretty cool. these ones. Although mm, that does create kind of a like a separation between the exhibit and the, it's not very immersive doing this is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Can't work on the mod, you're play too busy placing thousands of moss pieces. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with me, though, because it really helped get my moss pieces in order. Alright. I wonder if we can make this a little more immersive. Oh, wait, that looks stupid. Is the backside of this different? Nope. It ain't. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of that, actually. I think I'm gonna do away with it altogether. I'm not even gonna try to make it immersive. I think I just wanna use... Maybe this would work. I think that looks pretty cool, actually. Nice dirty log. Do we have like, oh wait, I know what, I know what I want. I want this. <laughs> Just that disgusting looking wood. Secret projects. Whose computer you want to crash? <laughs> nah, even it's just working on a million new things that he's not gonna share until the end of time. All right, let's see. What's a nice way we can create some some habitat immersion here? Oh, these are actually really cool as well. We should use these. Man, there's so many pieces that I've like never really used because I didn't need them for Bixberg. Eh? But they'll actually be super cool here. I think this is actually really nice to create a bit of immersion as well. Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, of course. That makes sense. Probably the best, better time than ever <laughs> to do that. Uh, this is not in Bakersberg. No, no, we are in a completely uh, new zoo. So, we... just a little thing. Oh yeah, what I didn't, didn't mention is, you see all these little bits of terrain. Um, I, I actually just took uh, a city. Um, oh, it's not that secret project. <laughs> God damn it, even. <laughs> Why do you have to make things so hard? I'm really bad at keeping secrets, okay? You're forcing me. Um, no, uh, yeah, I took a, a screenshot of a city and I traced all of the buildings and made a height map out of it. So that once I'm happy with the zoo and I want to like actually put it in a city, I can uh, make a couple of houses and then just cover all of this terrain with houses and we'll have a realistic city, which will be cool. And uh, if you can find out which city it is, uh, you get a cookie. It's not, maybe not even that hard, I don't know. Um, all right. Let's see, oh. I just realized, like, what if we did something with spectacles? Uh, no, it's not the Hague. Hellmand. No. It is... I'll, I'll give you one hint. Uh, yeah, it's a really small city zoo, yeah. It's like twice the size of Olimele. Uh, actually, I don't like that piece. Um... I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's probably the one city in the Netherlands that definitely doesn't need a zoo. <laughs> close. Nuna is close. Think a little bigger. Think city. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? I want to put like a black trim, but I'm I'm being stupid. I'm like, oh, I want to use a different piece than what I always use. But that's dumb. Yeah, it's Eindhoven. Uh, which, 
in hindsight is really stupid because it's got Zoo Veldhoven, best Zoo, and uh, and Nuna, like all within cycling distance. <laughs> So like, why would you make another zoo there? But I don't know, I just wanted a city. And that's just what I picked. Eindhoven itself actually doesn't have a zoo, but there's like three zoos within cycling distance from Eindhoven. Uh, and one of them is for Sil, <laughs> which is actually kind of fun. Uh, but we'll see it soon. Uh, I should have done this in a separate group. Let's actually take these out. <laughs> yes, even do you have 5 million euros for me? Then we can buy one of the jankiest zoos I've ever been to. And also the owner is like very picky seemingly about who he buy sells it to because it's like he's not ready to give up the zoo um like i've seen some interviews he's basically he's, he's looking for his successor um but he's not like ready to stop working for the next like what what did he say like 20 years or so so you'd be buying a zoo that you would get like ownership of within like that kind of time span uh it, it was kind of a weird story but yeah zoo veldhoven is uh, is for sale and it's it's a it's a it's a nice zoo i would say i had a good time there uh I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Um, <laughs> but it is very janky. But they got they got heart. Like it's a it's a parrot rescue. Um, first and foremost, and then they just got like a bunch of lemurs and some zebra, and that made them a zoo. <laughs> But uh, at the entrance, you can buy like a packet of nuts to, to feed all the parrots, which was a lot of fun. All right, I'm pretty happy with uh, what this is turning into. I think I want to add some roots. Uh, gonna get some of that South America pack <laughs> built going i hope i'm actually like because for me this is the first time like this zoo is actually other than the couple of things that i've built for like tarmashadi and stuff i've never actually really built my own zoo in this game and now suddenly i have to like i have to actually be creative and stuff ah how do you guys do it I don't really like <laughs> I don't really like those roots. I'm sure some of them will fit at some point, but Yeah. Eh. 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 Alright. Not recreating something is hard. It's yeah. I mean I've got a lot of ideas. Um, but sometimes, like, sometimes it's easier because you can kind of just build without... I don't know, like, it has two sides. Like, if, you're, if you've got the right, like, mindset, you can just kind of build without thinking. Um, but the same can be said for recreations. Like, if you've got really good reference, you can kind of just build without having to think about what you're going to build. You can just go. Um, so, I don't know, it both has ups and downs. <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, let's put the big boy here. Now, should we try to create 
Like. Hmm. So this is what I was thinking about earlier. I, I read somewhere that in Antwerp, uh, they actually have like a free roaming iguana area. And I was considering doing that here as well, since we have the boxers mod. But seeing as we have like a caiman over here, I didn't really think that was a very good idea. Perhaps. <laughs> So I uh, decided against it. Let's see, do we see... How does their exhibit work? Yeah, I saw, I definitely saw some tortoises in there. I do think there are green iguanas in there, but I'm not sure. That's what Zuchat said, like I have it open here. We walk through exhibit inside the Raptor House in Zoo Antwerp, where free ranging in this exhibit are green iguanas. Iguana, iguana. So, according to this guy, they are. Just in here. But yeah. They share it with tortoises, which is a lot less dangerous to them, probably. <laughs> Alright, let's do something like that smooth it out a little bit and we'll probably be able to do the rest with things uh, this is fine because I'm gonna put stuff over there anyway uh, in Burger Sue they also have free roaming iguana that's cool looking forward to it Oh, you have a picture of the iguanas there. Sweet. Alright. Free iguanas. <laughs> yes, we can take them. I, oh, I, I think about that so much. Whenever I'm at, like, next to a meerkat habitat. Like, they're just right up to the fence. You're like, I could just reach out and grab one. It would be so easy. Right, not sure what I'm gonna do over here. Definitely, I do think we're gonna do like a big window over here because this is like the main viewing area of the Cayman. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. I'm just gonna put that in the corner here. Make sure we don't stick out the side over there. Looking good. And... Let's see. So we're just gonna go and create a similar thing again, but now a lot bigger. Let's actually move it to the side. We don't want to have as much space as possible. I think this one has a pretty nice large stick sort of deal. So we'll put that on top here. And actually put this one on top of that again. There we go. That's already pretty good. Almost done, I would say. <laughs> Something like that is pretty good. So what's kind of important is what a lot of people tend to do, um, according to the book on zoo design, is that they would want to put something like this here to like complete the circle or whatever but what the book says is no 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 no! don't do that just keep it going because then you create immersion then you kind of make the glass a little invisible 
So that's actually what we're going to do here as well. I think I'm going to get rid of the water for a moment just to flatten out the thing a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll get a, a piece of plaster. Someone stole 65,000 euros worth of birds from a zoo in England, including penguins, macaws, spoonbills, and egrets. That is insane. Like they have to have noticed at some point, or maybe they thought they were just escaping, I guess. That is absurd. What an, what an asshole. All right, so we're going to put this circle over here and that's going to create the illusion that there is uh, no, <laughs> he has no egrets. <laughs> Damn it, Eben. Wait, Eben, did you respond on Discord yet? About your pun? Wait, I'm going to read that. Oh. Shame, what a shame. All right, so uh, let's put this up here. And uh, how do you plan your indoor areas? Well, apparently not quite the pun that I hoped it was. Never mind. Um, the coffee thing. <laughs> uh, how do I plan it? I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of was like, I want to put these things in here. I looked at what Zoo Park Overloan had and I just puzzled around until it kind of fit. But I kind of just went for it. Hello. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Let's add these on top of one group. I was gonna say on top of each other, but that wouldn't make sense. So I changed midway and then it made even less sense. Not sure what kind of color scheme I'm gonna go for here, um, but oh, I also haven't tested yet if our habitat gate actually works. Let's see if we can. I think we got distracted by the fact that Galapagos tortoises can swim, <laughs> so let's actually see if we can move these in. Oh yeah, it looks like we can. Sick. Let's see what that looks like. I think it's gonna look very interesting. <laughs> Can they go back? Yep, okay. Works for me. Like you would expect them to go over the fence, but no, underneath works too. <laughs> um, so yeah, do we like this circle thing? I'm not sure. Like I like the idea of it, but I don't know if I like the execution. <gasps> oh, I just got an idea. <laughs> and it's a stupid idea, but I love it. Stupid ideas are the best ideas. We're going to copy this. We're going to take the smaller version of it. The smaller version of it. Right? Now, let's see if someone can guess what this is before I actually built it. Um, let's line it up with the... Oh, crap. Now we broke the group again. Line it up with the glass. <laughs> Such a stupid idea. Uh, and we're going to get a smaller piece of plastic like this one. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to take a darker color. It's a pair of spectacles for the spectacled caiman. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Seeds could be cool. We could create like a habit, reverse habitat immersion. I mean, this is reverse habitat immersion. But. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know what I can. Probably just a fall. Eh. I need a fin, a fin, a trim. This piece will work nicely. I'm keeping it. If I think of something better, I'll add it. Um, you're completely lost by this. By what? Um, is there like a, f a floor, floor mural, like a tile thing? I feel like a, something tile, something tiley. <laughs> Could work nicely here, but I don't know what. I think I just wanna. Okay, I think I'm just gonna use these. And we're gonna make them that kind of darker color. Uh, I should start over here. I'm gonna do something like this. Oh yeah, something I wanted to mention as well. Because um, I've given this a little bit of thought. And I think that even though like I've technically set my zoo in like a Dutch city. I think I am going to make all the signage English just for YouTube's sake. Because <laughs> I already got a zoo with completely Dutch signage. <laughs> the spectacles. Truly the best thing anyone's ever made on Planet Zoo. Well, thank you. I think that is a deserved comment and uh, I totally agree. Okay, so I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna add one more row on either side. And what I wanna do with this is on the visitor side, um, I think I wanna have a kind of pathing similar to the real life Medidi. Uh, I was gonna look up Medidi, but what I mean is the temple. Um, so that means using the temple pieces like this. Is this like two meter wide? I think the elevator part can stay wood. That's fine. Um, but over here I want to use the temple stone. Actually I might I might just use the regular one. But um, This is like two meters, right? Yeah. Wait, are you? Nah. Kind of want to use this, but it's not two meters wide. That's a bit of a bummer. But I want to make the path out of that and then kind of have it break open over here to reveal the tile floor. And then on the side of the caiman, you'll have something similar. So we'll do this for now. Like I'll think about how I do the floor in a, in a second, but I just want to have the broken stuff. So we'll have 
something like this. What is your favorite animal in Beeksebergen? I mean, my favorite animal is the red panda, and they have those in the Beeksebergen. So, uh, naturally, my favorite animal in the Beeksebergen should also be the red panda. And that makes it kind of easy for me to visit like the zoo because zoos because pretty much every EAZA zoo <laughs> here has red pandas. So I'm never really out of uh, out of luck when it comes to them. Like unless they're a no show. Like I, I got scared at Blight Up for a moment because um, they were uh, doing construction work at the red panda habitat. So I thought I wasn't going to see any, but luckily they just put them with another animal, which led to the cutest thing I'd ever seen. Like, you would never see a red panda with a bandit mongoose. Well, was it? No, it was a dwarf mongoose. That's not a thing you will ever see <laughs> normally, but I did, and I think... One of the mongooses was like afraid of the red panda when it walked past them, and it was the cutest thing ever. All right, something like that is what I had in mind, and we can add some decal pieces actually to like crack up the. Are they not called crack broken decal? <laughs> Damage. Surface damage, of course. Well, we can use them to create some cracks around here, but we'll do that later. I quite like that. And then on the side of the caiman, we can either do the same or something different. Oh, that's awesome. I would never dare touch an animal in the zoo unless I'm sp explicitly told that it's allowed. <laughs> but that is kind of cool. Um, yeah, what will we do on the caiman side of this? Because do we like go for a naturalistic sort of thing? Because the, at the zoo it was a lot more... Um, I feel like it's very concrete-y and rocky, but I can't tell, which is kind of my bad for not doing a good job recording it. But I can't really tell how the caiman, like how it goes from the land part to the not land part. Because it almost looks to me like it's just a steep drop, but that seems odd. But I did... A really bad job recording it. There is a little bit of curvature there. But yeah, I think that's mostly just concrete. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> Seeing it swim like that. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's just mostly concrete and rocks. So, uh, there's only two zoos in Europe that have my favorite animals. Pangolin. Is in Leipzig and Prague, but you've seen them at Singapore. That's really cool. Yeah, I can't wait till I get to like travel and go to zoos far, far away. I wonder if I'll ever be able to visit many though, because um, I don't really know that many people that are that much into zoos. Like my girlfriend isn't that much into zoos. Like, she'll go with me every now and then, but, like, if, if we ever were to go on holiday, say, say we were to go to America, for example, like, <laughs> something that I would personally love to do is just go on a zoo, zoo road trip <laughs> through the US, just visit a ton of, like, awesome zoos in the US. But I couldn't do that with my girlfriend, because she would be 
bored after one two and want to go other places so hey tobias good to see you you know what i'll actually do i'll, I'll replace these with the recolorable version and we'll do the same thing but with a different color that could be cool uh, six six three wait so it's a portion rune three two that's this one yeah okay cool Ah, the thing you want to do next year, huh? <laughs> I didn't know about that. I, I legit didn't know about that. Oh, uh, this one? If all goes as planned, I'll go to Animal Kingdom by myself, Denver Zoo with Mike and Rubel, and San Diego Zoo with Mike. Sick. So you'd go... Wait, where is Denver? And San Diego. That's like... Those are very... Like, you've at least got two of the coasts covered there. <laughs> Will you go to San Diego Zoo or the Safari Park? Or both? But even I said road trip, not airplane trip. Are you going to meet Mike's parents? <laughs> that is adorable. All right. Let's see, we'll do something like this. And then I guess we could take these. Where are the panels? Here they are. I hate these pieces. Like, I don't know why the flexi color is so bad on them. Like, it doesn't transfer from object to object. Which is a bit... weird. Like, the mod... the mod set works so well with Flexicolor. And then you get the... like... This should be colored the same as these. Like, it should remember that, but it doesn't. And it's really bad. The faux, the new faux rocks they added are even worse, though. Like, at least with these I can kind of understand. Not really, though. But with the new faux rocks, it's kind of inexcusable that they don't behave that way. Yeah, it's horrible. And the worst thing is, is that I've heard from several YouTubers that they, like, during the early access, told Frontier about it. But they just didn't do anything about it. And that kind of bothers me a little bit. Yep, I think there's another one <laughs> for the list. I think you, Leaf... Uh, okay, that's that's the only two I've maybe spoken to about it, but... <laughs> uh, 
I'm sure there's more. I'm sure, like, Drew and Savannah weren't quiet about it either. <laughs> Frontier works in mysterious ways. I'm not sure why I've suddenly switched to the temple piece way of doing rock work, but I just kind of felt like it, I guess. <laughs> He needs a tender, loving, and care update. I think that's what the last update was supposed to be. Because <laughs> they made a lot of, like, small changes that... Uh, like, just fixing up small, like, inconsistencies and stuff like that. It's a bit of a shame we're never gonna see the Cayman deep dive in this. That's just how things are. The only thing that really bothers me is to now at the moment is the clipping of the crane wings. Yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. Uh, let's take this piece. Because I kind of want to curve I kind of want to curve the other way. Um, let's see, how do I want to curve actually? I think I'm going to move this a little to the side. Like that. And then we're going to go like this for this one. Slow motion clouded leopard jump. I mean, that's most felines, I think. They all jump in slow motion. Have you made a zoo life list? I feel like yours would be pretty long. Not really, because I've only been... My, my zoo life list, essentially, is going to be my uh, real life zoo tours videos. That's my life list, because I didn't really start visiting zoos until I started making that series. So that's what I kind of like about it as well, is that it's going to serve kind of a double purpose in a way. Do I keep this window like this? <laughs> like, do we make a viewing area out here? I think that could be kind of cool. I'm not sure how common that would be. Like, would that cause like isolation issues for like... Yeah, we'll probably just put a wall there. Just want people to experience these animals from inside. 
the building, not inside the animal. Yeah, true. Good idea. <laughs> I gotta be I gotta be on my toes with you around even gotta be real careful of what I say like that. But hey, I'll take it. Actually, we'll just add a little bit of rubble there. It's kind of a shame we don't have a flexi-color version of the, the actual rubble piece. Like, that's kind of weird how that, how like the most useful piece out of this set is the one that isn't flexicolor out of all of them this is gonna look killer thank you remnant yeah we it's it's there it's really t starting to take shape already i'm really happy with it i wonder if we're gonna be able to make the uh turtles tortoises sorry um uh I lost my train of thought reading the chat. Uh, the tortoises, I wonder if we're gonna be able to make them go outside on their own. Cause I kind of gave up on that with a capybara cause they would need a gate bigger than this, <laughs> which uh, I didn't feel like making. But yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm really happy with this. Yeah, I think this was a good call. Yeah, no, so what I find interesting about the temple pieces that I realized, like, not too long ago, did you know we have a third set of these? It's the ice set. These are the exact same pieces. And these ones are the East Asia pieces. So, if you didn't hate the Arctic pack enough, uh, all of the pieces were just kind of duplicates anyway. I mean, the Arctic pack came before the South America pack, but still. It's such a lazy pack. Uh, let's see, how am I going to deal with this? Um, how high is the water, actually? Oh, really? Wait. Asian stone. Wait, stone. Oh! Honestly, I forgot we had these. <laughs> I might actually use those. They're kind of neat. I mean, the temple, the temple pieces did add, like, all the rubble versions of them, which is nice. Like, those are appreciated. I would say. Uh, I think I'm not going to fill that in, because I want to have the wall kind of curve over here, so we have a bit of place to do a bit of planting back there. So... Let's see. Now, I think I want to 
do mud walls over here as well to create kind of a separated view a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go and grab. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, I typed stone beams in the temple. I was like, where are all the, where are all the pieces? Oh, Christ. And that actually looks like it's not perfect. But it's fine. So we have that all figured out. So we'll just add a little uh, round thing. Let's see. Does it even... I don't think it's called that. Let's just search for pillar. Uh, so we could use the concrete pillar. We could use the line. The we could use this one or you could use this one. I think I'm going to use this one. Uh, the artifact didn't get an exhibit animal either. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me my snowy iguana. Inaki just made a smaller exhibit. Okay, wait, we gotta check that out. Wait, 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 wait. Where is it? I'm looking, modding general, I assume. Yo. Okay, wait, let me open that. Look at that. That, I guess, that is a smaller exhibit box. It looks a little funky still, but I'm sure... Oh, yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, I can't wait for that. Yeah, because I am... Um, I am considering, actually I'm not really uh, considering it as so much as I'm pretty sure I am going to start using um, prop mods and other types of mods in this pro project. Because, uh, yeah, I kind of want to get most of my Oli Mola inspiration loose in this little building over here and making some custom exhibits using the exhibit pack that Nick just updated with a bunch of frogs and stuff. I think that'll be pretty fun. Uh, let's see, so we need to be about that high. There we go. We'll do something like that. I just want to get rid of that bit of dirt over there. And we'll put the water back. And this will make mostly sand, I think. Maybe a bit of dirtier spots. There we go. I like the look of that. Um, probably want to make like a basking spot for them as well, which we'll put somewhere in the corner there. Uh, I think we saw that in here as well, right? Yeah, they got a couple of basking spots. So that'll be good to add. Uh, we need to make like a, a realistic looking keeper gate. And some, I love how we I put the capybara in the thumbnail and we spent the entire stream making uh, the, the caveman habitat, but that's just how it goes. Um, 
I'm not going to put a wall up here just yet because I'm not sure how the both situation is going to end up looking. So let's just leave that empty for now. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and steal a wall over here. No, that's a bush. No. What? Steal a wall. And we're going to just drop that in here. And we'll make this a null barrier. Should be fine. And then... Yeah, this I'm leaving empty for now. Uh, I want to create some type of... Actually, we can probably just use the big boy. Yeah, the smaller ones are fantastic. Uh, the interior, I think he's working like it's just a scaled down version of what's the current interior. Yeah, um, uh, it's definitely exciting to see how this will evolve, but of course it's still in its first steps. I'm just gonna fill that in like I could. I could theoretically, if I don't use the big rock over here, I could make this like a little basking spot where they can actually uh, stay out of view, which I think will be nice to create a little bit of a private area for them. So I think I'm actually going to do that. Otherwise we're going to have a bunch of stressed out caiman. Because yeah, like if you're really peeking, you might see a till. But overall this spot is going to be pretty Nicely secluded. Let's see, I think I'm going to use a thinner piece for that as well. Maybe pull this one this way a bit. Yes, if they don't have any privacy, they're not okay, man. Thanks for your contribution, even. It is always appreciated. So, I have Even's phone number now. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to send him a message. <laughs> to, 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 like, you know... You just added someone to your context. You want to make sure it like, works and stuff, of course. Um, so, uh, of course, the only thing... <laughs> the only thing I could think of that would be an appropriate message to send uh, was a dick dick pic. <laughs> so I just sent him a lovely dick dick pic. And actually, this morning, I didn't want to push it. <laughs> but this morning, I wanted to send you a booby. 
but I, I decided against it because I didn't want to spam you with pictures of animals. Uh, let's put the caiman back in so I can kind of see how big he is. Because uh, we, we're getting somewhere with this. Jose, come back please. Alright, so this would be a pretty, pretty nice spot for him, I would say. Uh, oh, he's not able to go in... Really? He can't go in the water? Jose, what's wrong? What's stopping you? Is it these? Are these not traversable? Jose? Yeah, wow, I did not expect that. Okay. That's a bummer. Uh, let's try the plaster ones. Maybe they're fine. And otherwise we'll just have to try something else. Uh, how far am I sticking out the back? Oh, that's fine. The back of this place is going to be a mess anyway. <laughs> I don't really care. This is a lovely song. Which one is this? Arctic. The Arctic pack had good. That's the one good thing about the Arctic pack. It had good songs. It has that. Uh, it has that uh, above the wetland pack, which doesn't have any music, which is a bit of a bummer. Um. I guess I actually kind of want to make it like this. And have a little bump, maybe. There. And then we'll add... Uh, it's a single day won't be... Maybe they'll do... I don't know. I'm not sure if it means that we'll never get any new music. Like, I don't think we can make that sort of conclusions. Like, <laughs> your sample size... Th the sample size you're drawing this conclusion on is literally one. <laughs> it's okay, man. Let's see. Same problem? No, okay, they can go over the plaster one. Okay, I guess the Indian pillar just has a horrible hitbox. That would also be kind of nice, actually, to get a heat map for, to visualize the hitboxes of things. That looks interesting. Um, yeah, I kind of want them to go in the water. kind of want to see what that looks like. But he's just out here. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Yes. I mean, obviously he can't deep dive, I assume. Nope. But that's fine. This is still really cool. Just look at that. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It's a little dark, but I kind of like that. It's just the vibes. The vibes of our Cayman temple. Okay. Let's make his little shelter thingy, which I think size-wise we're pretty good. 
So we just need to need to build it. Is this another Arctic pack thing? It is. It's number two. My shuffle is very good at picking songs from the same pack. The reverse habitat immersion is on point. Thank you. That was definitely the ID. I did my best. There we go. So they've got a nice little bit of shelter here. We'll just stick in uh, one of these. Even <laughs> that one's so bad. <laughs> you know it's bad when I find it bad. Let's see what kind of things they've got m a bit of mulch out there. So I think we'll do something similar to that. I feel so bad for you. To no, I'm looking so forward to spending an entire day with you. Like whenever we like, I was thinking about that uh, after we finished recording. Hi, be right back. Oh, oh, I thought we were going to say hi, be right back. I'm dead. Um, no, but I was thinking about that uh, when we finished recording um, my Bakes of Bergen video. Like, whenever we record, one of us has to be like, okay, we really got to stop talking because we're going to be talking for hours otherwise. <laughs> uh, that's always the case. And now for once, we're actually going to have hours to talk to each other. So I'm just looking forward to that. Oh wait, wrong tab. Uh, Eben, you seem like the kind of person who uh, would know exactly which hex code I need to use to turn this thing into moss. Well then. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> uh, it's not brown enough. It's too gray. Needs more saturation. Darker. Something like this. That's good enough. There's a quarter circle piece of mulch. Yep, there's all sorts of shapes. I don't even use mulch that often. Because usually it's not the best option um, for, especially in a, in a temperate biome. You're better off using tropical rocks as dirt. gonna add it in here as well. Actually, kind of 
cool to do is to also do the opposite. So we'll take another moss piece. Did I actually group these up? Yeah, I did. Okay, let's go in the same group. Gonna head out. Good, great to catch the stream. Yeah, hey, thanks for uh, dropping by. Nice to see you too. And yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna be streaming again. It's, uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm never gonna be consistent with it because it depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> Uh, and I don't like doing it when other people are at home. So uh, that is becoming more and more infrequent. So it's just, yeah. Uh, every day I learn a new way to use the decals. Yeah, it's crazy. Just wait until you see uh, either my next Bakesabergen video or whatever Eben's uploading next week. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to show in it, but if it is what I'm talking about right now, then you're going to have your mind blown. I kind of do hope that he uploads it before I do, because I kind of stole mine from his. <laughs> I got that beyond true schedule. Oh yeah, that's actually something I wanted to mention. Um, I submitted a bunch of things for, for the community showcase stream. Wait a minute. Gonna open my curtains again because I think the sun is gone. Yes. Get that natural lighting. Oh, the sunset is really beautiful. Um oh, I looked at the sun. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Um oh wow. Why did I do that? Um next Friday. Okay, yeah, you'll probably be first. Uh because I kinda wanna uh uh, Goran, how did you change the angle snap value in the playground episode? Wow, that is a very specific question. Okay, wait, um, one thing at a time. So, I submitted a bunch of things to the community showcase thing because last night, uh, I, was it last night or the night before that? Doesn't matter. Um, I uploaded a whole bunch of things to the workshop, actually. So if you go to my, my workshop page, um, which is in the description of every one of my videos, so you should be able to find it. Like, I uploaded some of the tables I made for the restaurant, I uploaded this little self-service desk, which has some, like, ketchup and mayonnaise <laughs> dispensers, sex of plates and stuff. Um, I uploaded these planters, I uploaded the gibbon climbing frame, I uploaded uh, these lamps, the outdoor restaurant table, which is functional for your restaurants, a little bird nest, all the, a bunch of the props from the wildlife building. Uh, I uploaded the elephant statue, the coal tan mine things, the new little rolling coin thing. Uh, this one isn't public yet, you'll see that in the next episode. Uh, my new directional signs, the, uh, I made a new stork's nest, which is up on there. So yeah, bunch of things on the workshop uh, for you all to download if you're interested and you should be seeing some of them whenever Drew does his next showcase uh, and let's see then someone asked about the uh, playground the angle snap thing okay that's the thing I got from Bronation so let's quickly go to oh I almost shut down my PC that would not have been a good thing to do oh don't look at that those are my DMs with <laughs> those were private um, I got them from, where did I get those from, Plan, Plan Co General Chat, I think, and it's a thing in here, ooh, it was somewhere on Bronation, but, um, Uh, nope. It's somewhere. Here it is. Okay. Uh, so go to saved games, frontier developments, and then not Planet Coaster, of course, because we're playing Planet Zoo. Um, so you would go to Planet Zoo. Let's actually do it. Uh, so you go to saved games. I should have that P 
pinged here somewhere. I guess I don't, so I'll just have to go to... Well, how do you go to users? <laughs> uh, it should be in here, right? Somewhere. Nope. Nope. Where, where are my save games? Am I stupid? Is it in here? I, I, I'm 99% sure I have... Oh, here, saves. Right, okay, cool. So, saved games, Frontier Developments, Planet Zoo, and then Config. And you go gameremote.config, so it's this one. You open that with Notepad. Let's see, open with Notepad. Then you edit, find, what's the thing? Rotation snap size. Rotation snap size. And then you find it here. It's currently set to 45. And then you can change that and save it. Um, and then it will be updated. But the problem is... Um, uh, the problem is... Uh, you do have to, you have to close your game. Then open this. Change it. Save it reopen your game and then it will be changed so you have to close and reopen your game every time you want to do it so that's kind of the annoying part about it uh so yeah that's how you do it hope that makes sense <laughs> it's it's a real hassle but if you want to be that precise with your thing then uh it's definitely worth it i'd say uh, so I think I'm just gonna quickly actually go and cover this up like that and then we'll put some walls up here in a second uh, but yeah we are gonna work on this again uh, hopefully Kai will add it to the next free build update that would be nice actually I wish you would just be able because like, why can't I not just write a number in there? Like, that would not be hard to make. I'm not a fan of that. But oh well, Frontier's gonna Frontier. I need that bus. <laughs> Fine. Fine. If you can't wait. Uh, oh, wait. Wrong page. If you really can't wait. I'll put it unlisted for now. Ah, oh, fuck it. Public. There. It's public. Here you go. Take it. <laughs> hey Lovro, been a while. How are you? Um so this isn't gonna be functional anyway, so I can make this as low as I want, but still, even then I find this a little too low, like I want it to be this high. But then this would be too high for me. Uh, maybe this one is actually better for this. Nope, it is actually. Huh, I didn't expect them to be so similar. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work for me. With any of those. But we can use this one. And kind of freeform it a little bit. Nah, not a fan. Uh, we'll just use the UFO rocks. Let's go over to the nature tab. Because for some reason the faux tree branches are in both tabs, but the faux rocks are only in the nature tab. Again. I guess Frontier is just gonna Frontier. Why did that not copy? There we go.
I guess the color values are just... Something like that is kind of like what I want. Maybe a little bit lower. And then we'll add uh, this piece over here. There we go, and we'll also add a bit of this to it to make it blend in a bit better. <laughs> that was just uh, a kind of a random first attempt, but that actually looks really nice. Uh, we can also do something like this, actually. This kind of makes that faux rock piece that we added a bit unnecessary, so I'm actually going to remove that again in this one as well. Oh, no, not that one. This one. There, we'll just keep that ceiling. Uh, is there any features you really want to see added in the next free update? Uh, it's one Eben mentioned, which is um, to be able to uh, recolor your staff members' uniforms. I think that will be an amazing feature. Um, so that's definitely one. Uh, other than that, oh, there's so many things I can't keep track of them. All right, let's add a little lamp over here, making it a little invisible boy. And then we'll set that to always on, and we'll make that a nice bright green kind of color. And you can actually already see a little bit, which is nice. Uh, but I am going to double up on the lamp. Which will make it just that little bit more apparent. I'm actually going to maybe even, maybe even triple up, you know? Just to get that green glow in there. Really make it look like a basking place. And why don't we also add some branches uh, well I know why we don't because it doesn't really look that good however this branch would make a fine addition to our viewing area over here because it's got that same really brokeny brokeny that's a word now I coin it Brokeny kind of wood. Kind of that driftwood vibe. Which we appreciate here. Okay, so we got a little basking spot. Uh, we'll put some planting on top of that. And let's see. I think then we'll be almost good to just throw in a couple more plants. Uh, we need a back wall, of course, and we need. Yeah, no, wait, there's lots. There's lots to be done. Uh, let's do all the mud walls first. Um, do we add a similar type of door that we have over here? But then in here? Or do we do something different? I think I'm going to add a similar type of wall. For consistency's sake. I'm also going to just quickly group this up. Or actually do the opposite. I'm going to group it off. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, eh, I don't care. We'll just reuse this one again. It's fine. It's not illegal to reuse your mud walls a little bit. Let's see, make sure it's actually, it doesn't need to be all the way down because we can just add some of those. So let's put that here. Hello, Endal. Welcome. We are building a spectacle Cayman habitat. I'm sorry if my thumbnail is considered clickbait because I put a capybara in it, but it was the only interesting thing that I had to show that was semi-relevant to what we're doing this stream. Uh, why did I search for path? That's stupid. That's what I already searched for. I wanted to search for temple. Also, I'd be covered in water. I just realized that's a thing we can do. Uh, let's go a little bit more to the dirtier side. Uh, I just want to be a bit more on the grayish kind. And let's make it a bit clearer. Perhaps. Just to get a good view. Uh, we also, oh yeah, we need some like drainage and stuff. We don't have that. Uh, but also, let's add a little bit of bubbles just to see what that looks like. Because I've heard that's a cheat code for making things look good. We now have 0.1 bubbles. I'm seeing no bubbles. Oh, oh, there's a couple. I think I want to have a little bit more. Let's go 0.2 bubbles. Yeah, that's good. Sick. Okay, I'm really happy with how this is going. Ooh, you look so cool. Oh, he blinked. Hell yeah, you're cool. All right. So we need one more wall. Now I thought like, oh, hey, let's take one of these walls, but it's just, they're all the same wall, basically. So I'm not sure if there really is a point to it. But let's do it anyway. I will actually get rid of these. Don't really need those. And let's try not to have them stick out too much. And now we just need the piranhas. Yeah, I wish. That would be cool. If if we get if mods uh, if mods get fixed, I'll see about adding them. Because there was a red belly piranha mod, and I was going to add it to this. But yeah, can't do that now. 
The fish moss actually seem to be largely unaffected. Uh, steam. <laughs> and the latest one, the Bell Series Victor, are incredible. I know, I've seen them. I could try it, but I just don't want to break anything. I'm really scared now. And the thing is, like, I don't know how good they will look because they can't deep dive. So I'm not sure. Like, we can try it, of course, but. Did I have actually put on my thing? I have, okay, cool. I never checked. I forgot. Alright. I think I made this unnecessarily tall. But whatever. It's a nice, impressive bridge. <laughs> uh, don't care about that part yet. So, let's just take this wall again. I think it's actually different than that one, so that's good. So let's tilt it to go up. Uh, that doesn't matter. Right, going to leave for today, going to watch the rest of the stream tomorrow. See you. See you, Eben. Thanks for tuning in. Always livens up the place. <laughs> Alright. So, we're just going to have a bunch of plans back there. Uh, we're going to continue on our little sky. Like that. Uh, I might put some decals on that as well. Like, you can... I saw... I think it was... Was it Carlos or Fihoha who used the moss pieces as clouds? Which I thought was just bloody brilliant. Because, yeah, if you make them completely white, that works incredibly well. Anyway, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Let's see if I want it. Because I kind of like just the blue. Like it's good enough. Um, but yeah, where did I actually put the Keeper Gate? Okay, so the Keeper Gate is over here. Which means it would kind of be in the middle of these panels. I kind of want it. I doubt... Yeah, no, we definitely... Obstructed by water volume. Okay, we might be able to move it if we remove the water for a moment. Terrain too uneven. Okay, we were able to move it a little bit, and now it lines up with this panel over here. Which I like. Because that means that, yeah, that just makes more sense for it to have a door there, right? Uh, so let's put the water back. Nice. And then we'll take this mud wall. Actually, we don't need the mud wall, really. I just need the door. So we're going to have our little door over here. Which... In real life you would probably try to hide a bit better. Because um, now it's like directly across from the viewing. It would actually make more sense to have it... Uh, wait. It would make more sense to have it over here, I think. And then... You could 
put up another wall over here. Like that. Although from here, yeah. Yeah, this this layout doesn't really lend you to make it. Let's, let's make a more hidden door. Like, yeah, let's make a more hidden door. Let's take the mud wall after all. And we'll put that back here. And we'll take our archer. Oh, doesn't even need to be that tall. Something like this. We'll just get a little door in there. And the only thing actually we probably do want this door to have um, is like a little bit of mesh to look through before you open the door. So we're just going to add that as well. So I'm just going to drop this down here, we're going to get some mud pieces that we'll use. Like this. I love how I'm like, yeah, we're going to make a more natural door. I'm like, I'm going to put mesh in it. <laughs> but that's what you would want, because you want to know before you open the door where the animal is, kind of. Um, so let's take this out. And we're going to actually... Come on. Natural and realistic are unfortunately not compatible. It's possible, uh, just not in this instance, I guess. Yeah, not often. But that's kind of the beauty of it. That's what I like. Because what you would want, ideally, uh, you would want the entrance door to be over here because that's out of view like you i mean if you really try you can kind of see it but mostly you're going to be looking around here and you won't see the door and same from over here you can't see that wall so that would be the ideal place to put it but we've got an iguana exhibit over there so and yeah what you could do is you could Pull the iguana habitat to the front and then you would have like a little divot here that has access to both of them but uh, we are quite low on space here already so I don't want to move that iguana exhibit and the iguana exhibit is actually one of the few exhibits where the size is good maybe even on on the smaller side so 
definitely don't want to imply that it's smaller than that. So uh, let's, since we don't actually want to make a backstage because I'm lazy, uh, we're going to just put a little black pasta piece behind here. Like so. And then we're going to get our mesh. Mesh. There we go. I'm surprised that worked first try. <laughs> so yeah, let's make this one a little smaller yet. Or maybe actually keep those the way they are and we'll get some font pieces. And to make a little line. There. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna go and make that. Eh, it doesn't really work. Um, I don't think there's a different mud piece that figures, unless I use the window. Oh, that one looks interesting. It's like all smooth around the sides. Um, but ah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty ugly out here probably. But let's give it a go. So we get rid of this piece. I do prefer that. So, I mean, it can get much worse than this. <laughs> Although we can, of course, make this all null, except for that one. But yeah, my plan is to add like a little, like wooden or like corrugated metal backside to this building, which is like the backstage of it. Um, that will hide everything sticking out the back. Uh oh. Hate it when that happens. Like it looks fine here. Just don't zoom out. Why? Why are you like this? I hate that so much. Um,. Let's go back quite a bit then. Yeah, that works. Okay. Then we'll just get our mesh again. There. Yeah, but now this sticks into it. 
which also sucks. Although, eh, we can actually join it like that. That works. Uh, yeah. We'll figure something out. So, uh, yeah, let's get the phone pieces to the other side as well. So, what we can actually do to do that is a little trick. So, since we're not building this on the world axis, um, I can easily move them over. As you can see, like on the world axis, we move from this side. And if we're relative, we're just sinking it out. But what you can do is take your font piece. Uh, let's take both of these, actually. Or actually, it doesn't matter. We only need the L's. Uh, but we're going to take those font pieces. We're going to take this. We're going to move them. Let's move them over here. Then we can select those font pieces, select the same font pieces over here. And now these are like on this line, right? We move them straight to the left. So now they're on the same line. So if we duplicate them now, they're going to be aligned along the wall. So we can actually move them uh, along the wall like that. There's a little, little trick for you there. Makes life a little easier sometimes. And actually, we can do the same thing even rotating. So now we can rotate them like this. And just... It's a little finicky. But we can put them in over there. And get rid of that one. Also... Yeah, no, that was it. Let's put that like this. And that's a bummer. Uh, we're going to need another J for that. <laughs> Wishing, yeah, it's just, you got to think about it. Like, it's just something you have to, like, I, I don't know. Oh crap, uh, I'm actually going to ungroup it again so I can move it in place. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to be as easy as I thought. Yeah, no, give up. Just gonna go and make that a similar color. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't fix it, just hide it. There we go. That works. And then we get rid of this, because we don't need this anymore. Here we go. That is our hidden, not so hidden door for the Cayman. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more detail to that, to the back wall. these songs. I, it's a real shame that we never got any new ones. Oh, sorry. I wanted to check my Discord. 
real quick. Just one moment. So since we're gonna build a backstage thingy here anyway, this I don't really have to worry about hiding any of these as well as we've been hiding the rest, so we can go a little bit closer up to the wall. Uh, we just need to have something to fill in the top here, which I know what we can use because it's just the uh, opaque. Oh, we're in the nature tab. Uh, we just need the opaque panel. One meter. Uh, or we could also do is take the actual this one. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Okay. Hmm. Wait, that means... What does that mean? That means trouble. I could use this. That works. I'm gonna cover that up anyway. In a bit. Uh, this one needs to move over slightly to be in sync. Can I move you? Probably not, right? Uh, a bit. Okay, we'll fix that with some tropical rocks. That'll be fine. Uh, okay. Hello, Lars! Welcome. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good weekend. Happy Easter. Tomorrow is, of course, Easter. Everyone's favorite thing. Yesterday I wanted to go buy some chips. But the stores were all closed at 7pm. So I couldn't. So we ordered some online. <laughs> like there's a, there's a grocery service. That, like, you, you order your groceries and then within 15 minutes they're delivered. And it, the fee for it isn't even that big, so it was actually kind of worth it. Because I was watching a movie with my girlfriend and I really wanted some chippies, you know? <laughs> is it Easter? Tomorrow it's Easter. Tomorrow is the first day of Easter. Uh, which I think in most countries is the only day of Easter, but us Dutch people were like, a holiday on a Sunday? That won't give us a free day off. <laughs> let's make it another day. Let's let's add a Monday to it. To make sure that we have a day off of work. So we have a first day of Easter and a second day of Easter. Yeah, so... I think, yeah, most, I think all stores were closed at like 7. And it just makes me think, like, why do the stores need to be closed? Because some guy was nailed to a cross 2,000 years ago. But that's just me. <laughs> I'm sorry if that offends you. I'm just not very religious. I don't don't really care. Oh, we went to Blighter yesterday, but it was very busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, because it was a day off. Yeah, when I went, luckily, it wasn't that busy. But there were still a lot of kids, because they were, like, school trips and stuff. Which always is a pity. So, um, we're not really gonna be... 
Alright, let's do this. So there aren't really any plants we're going to be able to add on top of that. Um, and also we need to lower this. Because otherwise we'll be sticking through the roof. And we don't want that either. But hey, that is the walls of our habitat done. So now it's time for planting, I said, I suppose. I wanted to say suppose and guess at the same time, and I said sass. Doesn't really matter, you can go whenever you want because you have a subscription. That's nice. I uh, when, when I went, they didn't check... Like, I said I had a Plunkendall subscription, and they checked my card, but I feel like they didn't, like, make a note of it or anything, which I guess they are supposed to do, because I'm only supposed to get two free trips. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I, uh, I still have two trips, even after going once. I just thought for a second that I forgot to recolor this moss, but it's just green because of the lamp. So, that is good. That is normal. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, he's gonna get boxed. Uh, can he still move around? I think he should be... I think he should be fine. Yeah, he's a, he's a little limited, but he's, he's fine. He's all good. Oh, that's, oh my god, the capybara noises are amazing. Alright, so we're gonna have some sort of entrance over here, not exactly sure. But then over here we've got our, as you enter you immediately have the first viewing area of the spectacled caiman. Which is currently not there, so you would be out of luck. Then there's probably also gonna be some sort of view for the tortoises over here. And then we're gonna have our gonna have our little boat interior. Then you come up here and you get to see the caiman. Oh, he's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I'm not mad that they added him. He's a good boy, Jose. Yeah. Hope my life be without Jose. Um, but yeah, then up here we'll also have a view of the tortoises, and we'll be able to see. Kind of the exterior of that boat. Gonna make sure it looks a little nice. Uh, well, we'll see about that. And we'll also have our first view of the capybara and the anteater over here. Um, I wanna add. I wanna add a little VFX thing there because I don't like it. I don't like how it um, doesn't splash, <laughs> so we're going to add a little splash over there, that looks better. Um, oh, we accidentally exited our explore mode, come on. Um, so yeah, I think that's fine, and we're going to add a bunch of like sticks and twigs and whatnot uh, to this as well. Uh, and of course we also have our iguana over here, which is... Oh, I was going to say it's hidden, but no, it's right over there. Ah, oh, look at that. It's like breathing. That's really cool. I didn't know how animated they were. Um, and yeah, that's completely normal for them to do. So over here we're going to have a little garden sort of thing. We might put... We could put like a frog in here. Like, maybe in the corner here, put a little frog terrarium. I don't know. Just an idea. But yeah, then we have another view of them. And then we move on to the rest. <laughs> Alright, um, so yeah, let's, let's get some plants. So we're just going to kind of keep the same planting going. That I already put up here. So we're gonna get everybody's favorite, the crowberry bush. It, it looks so tropical because <laughs> of how green it is. Um, all 
we go. Just gotta find the right angle for it. To make it look like it's kind of spilling over and not just right on top of it. Something like that. And over here, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do. We can probably use some of the crowberry still. Um, because it's pretty flat when you use it well. Uh, okay, no, that's just way too big. And uh, we can actually put it onto the wall a little bit as well. Because the caiman isn't really going to touch it. Um, I think I'll steal that bush ID. What bush ID? Like, putting the bushes on top? I don't think that's necessarily my ID. Don't, don't want to take credit for that, at least. Um... I think over here is good, because we are going to add more rock walls over here. Um, but on this top, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet. Oops. Oh, I gotta be careful that we're not going uh, too high up, actually. Uh, let's actually put the ceiling back on for a moment. Why are you still grouped up? I thought I split you like two times already. Also, let's take these little things and put them on the other side as well. There we go. So, how much of this is sticking out? Okay, this side is fine. But yeah, over here we definitely went a little overboard. Gotta trim that down a fair bit. Uh, oh, on both sides. Yeah, that's kind of the downside of using thing that has a shape like that. I think I'm gonna not use that one over here actually. Uh, but we're also just gonna use the circular one. It's just a little more convenient. There we go. Oh, that's already looking very nice and lush. Now, I'm guessing in real life these would probably be more so fake plants more than anything. But we don't have to worry about that too much. All I need to worry about is making sure they don't stick out the top too much. <laughs> or at all. <laughs> Not too much makes it sound like they can stick out a little bit, but preferably we don't have that either. Let's see, what does that look like? Not great, because you're out there, but now you're probably out here, so we're gonna rotate you like this. That's actually fine. So we got some of our Brazil nut trees, even. And then we have some elephant ears. Now, 
in Medidi we actually see a little bit of, actually quite a fair bit of planting inside of the uh, Cayman habitat. So why don't we add some as well? Right there. Just give them a little bit extra stuff. I'm not sure if these plants prevent them from walking, so we do have to make sure to check that we aren't destroying their traversable area. I guess not. I'm not sure if I will like that. Um, actually, can I, I want to keep the roof on to see if we're not like going through the roof, but I also want to take the roof off because it makes building a little bit more challenging. <laughs> It'd be nice if this was like The Sims, where you could just have a uh, toggle roof button. the disk instead. Uh, I tried using the roots earlier and I wasn't really happy with it. I could try again, but I think something like vines will be nicer. I'm a pretty big fan of those. kind of like to put in a banana plant, but they're a little big, so I'm not sure if that's going to work out with the roof that we have. That just barely works. But hey, if it works, it works. And these water bananas are actually a bit smaller. No, they're not. <laughs> they're even bigger. Uh, but we've got the elephant ears. Yeah, that's a bit too much of the same. And we got these, which I think these will actually look kind of nice on top of this thing. Because these things look very fake in my opinion, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, wait, no, not all. Just a slight random rotation would be good. There. Ah, oh, I love it when you add some greenery and just immediately the whole thing comes to life. Take another one of those. Here. I think some vines will look really good around here actually. Um, 
Oh yeah, these things. Forgot about those. They also have those little roots, which are nice. For spots like this. We'll look into that area when we do the iguanas, because for now I'm not actually sure how well those would work. And I want to take some of the decals here and kind of add them around these plants to give that planted look. Making sure they're properly soiled. So it's floating a little bit, but what can you do? Yeah, whatever. The plant got buried a little bit when they added new soil. That happens. <laughs> uh, a couple more of the small plants up in here. I'm gonna work on that once we finish the boat thing because I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna look like as well. So for now uh, we can look into some vines. We can also uh, no, not, maybe not over there actually. Are we sticking out here? No, no we're not. Okay, that's good. Uh, I kind of want to add a layer behind them. Let's just add another layer of crowberry. Just to get that fullness in there. Oh, look, he's swimming. <laughs> I love it. All right. So. Um, do I have any other plants? Not really, no. We can... Have a little look around them. See what other small things we have. Uh, let's actually go from the bottom to the top. Because... Uh, no, those aren't that tropical. These could be nice. Maybe. Have some flowers. These could be nice. But I think we might be better off keeping it kind of simple. The staghorn fern is cool though. Like, you've got this one. Like, they can kind of lo look like they're growing out of a wall, but I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it for now with that stuff. I'm going to get some lianas. And add a bunch of those to the sides. Why did it do that? Ah, uh, I don't like the way that they rotate. I wish they rotated around the other axis. I think I'm gonna actually disable random rotation because that's just gonna make things more difficult.
So my original plan for this building would be to have like free roaming uh, golden lion tamarins, like you have in Overloan as well. Uh, in which case we probably would have actually hung quite a few of these vines around for them to climb on. But... Oh well. I need to actually think about the ceiling structure as well. Because in real life you just have these straight beams kind of going across. And... And of course in this area those are also holding the netting. What? That was weird. Uh, let's see, I should have a shot of the ceiling right around after the caiman. Yeah, okay. Oh, there's actually netting kind of all over. That's interesting. But... Can we create something similar to that? Oh wait, let me actually quickly check this message. Because um, I'm not. Maybe I want to raise the ceiling a little bit to be able to get those structures in. Because as it stands. We don't really have anything like that, so we probably would have... Let's see, we got four. So we probably have one beam going down the middle. Oh, it would have been kind of nice to incorporate that into that. <laughs> Perhaps. Eh, maybe not necessarily, though. We can still put up a beam over there. Because we would need a couple of beams, is what I'm thinking as well. So maybe that would actually have changed how I would have designed the pathing. I kind of didn't think that through. So, let's see. Thick beam, thinner beam, side beam. So, what I would make that out of... Um, is if we go to the Europe, Europe pack, uh, we got these, and we got these. That actually looks kind of cool. Um, I think that would be a good start. So I think we would actually just have the bottom be one of these, and the top would be kind of two of them. Create that thicker beam. And it doesn't have to be huge. I think something along these lines is actually good enough. Should have thought about this sooner. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So now I just need to make sure that they are all the same kind of color. So I'm going to start with these three. 
and I'm going to make them a bit more this kind of color. And then we'll invert and make them similar, maybe a little darker. I think that matches it. Why are we sped up? I love actually being able to build in play mode. Uh, of course, I can't do that in the big spare file. <laughs> so it's a luxury I'll be happy to take advantage of over here where we still can. So what's cool about these is we might actually also be able to hang some vines off of that. Is this still in the Bakersberg? No. No, we are... Uh, this is a new thing I started. Just to uh, get some creativity out of my system. For a while I've been wanting to, to start my own project. That isn't a recreation. And this is the start of that. This is the first, first time I'm actually designing kind of my own things in this game. And I think so far so good. I'm really happy with what I've been building so far. These things are still too light. So I'm actually going to go and... Why did I only select half of them? That makes very little sense. Uh oh. Or inside another thing. I never like being inside something else. And we ruined it. Ah! I hate that that works that way. Planet Zoo, why do you do this to us? There we go. Now we just need to not misclick, and we will be fine. So, let's recolor that, make it even darker. Actually, quite a bit darker, I think. That looks about right. Okay, so we're going to take that and move it around. So do we want one at every... Oh wait, no, definitely not. I think every four meters uh, should be fine. Because then they also line up with these beam-like things. Uh, do we want them at the sides? I... Probably, right? I'm actually not sure. Let's see, over here we're looking at the top. The top doesn't really... No, I guess they're not really <clears throat> at the size of it. Yeah, no. Okay. We'll skip the sides. I guess that makes sense. So I'm just going to put these down, kind of willy-nilly, and then we'll see what it ends up looking like. And see if we want to make any adjustments to kind of fit them better. Why did it... Why are they so far from the thing? Oh, I expected them. Like we... Oh, wait, there's overlap. Hmm. That's fine. Is it? No, it's not. I don't like that. Uh, let's... Redo them. 
I want them to take up exactly four meters. So that means that the cast iron fence part needs to be a little flatter. Takes up a little more space. Um, okay, let's try that. So I'm gonna flip it around. And actually to make sure that we stay on the same axis, I'm just gonna move it relatively instead. Like this. And move it like this. Okay, so that's a bit too much. Uh, let's see. How am I going to figure this out? There has to be a way to figure this out. Wait. I know exactly what to do. Uh, cast iron fence. I'm gonna put one here. I'm gonna put one on the other side. Then, if we do this, we'll be exactly in the middle. And if we do this, we'll be in the middle of that. And if we do this, will not do it correctly. Uh, if we do this, we'll be in the middle of that. So that's four. So now if we do this, that should be... No, that's not right. Wait. This is a length of one, this is a length of one and a half. But what we need, actually, yeah, this is, a, this is one, one and a half. But what we need is one and like a third. But I don't think I can do a third. Wait, this is 75. Wait, I need to think real quick. If we we have seventy five, and we have two, my brain isn't working. <laughs> I can't do maths right now. Wait. So wait, we need four divided by three. So we need to get to one point three. That makes sense. So this over here is 1.5 and this is 1. So if we go to the middle of that, why didn't it do that? If we go to the middle of... Okay, it's not working at the moment. I don't know why that stopped working. There we go. Okay, so this is 1.25. Same thing for over here. And the middle of, wait, 1.25 and 1.5 divided by 2. Oh, that's plus 2. I thought that was a divide by signal. got to use brackets. Okay, yeah, the middle of these two should be it then. Just about. Like, we're ever so slightly off. So, there. So, if we want our thing to be accurate we need to start over here and over here 
and then we should end up just about there <laughs> right yeah because this is 1.25 this is 1.375 it's probably I'm barely making sense to myself so <laughs> I hope this makes sense to other people but math Wait, no. <laughs> Need to be at this one. Yeah. That's pretty good. Math. It works. <laughs> like, it's still kind of eyeballing it a little bit, but... We use math to think things. See? Pay attention in high school, kids. Not everything is useless. You might want to make scaffolding in Planet Zoo and you'll think back on your high school teacher and everything they taught you. Can't see. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, we actually want that little bit of overlap, huh? That probably screwed us again. Oh, no. No, it's perfect. Wow. I didn't expect that. I, for one, did not expect it to be that perfect. Uh, I'm actually gonna take these two, put them in here. So, around, around, there, around about. Uh, can I get rid of you? Probably not. Maybe a little. Not at all. That's fine. I'll figure something out to fix that. Um, right, let's select all of our boys again. I think I just want the middle one for the main event. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I think I might alter that viewing area a little bit to make this work a bit better. Let's see if we do that. Eh, this doesn't really work the way you would hope. Maybe like that. No, they're all slightly off. I'll just fix them manually. Because what you kind of want over here is for them to line up like that. And then I kind of don't care about the others, really, because who's really going to look at it that closely? Like, okay, is it really that blatantly skewed that I do want to fix it, but there we go. And then for these... We're gonna keep going. Let's 
line you up with you and this you can empty there's dogs going crazy outside fun stuff I should drink something getting a bit of a raspy throat and now I spat all over my microphone well wait is that everywhere oh for god's sake I didn't do a good enough check about my things and now they're ugly <laughs> this is very very excited about the support beams I can imagine yeah that must be it Uh, do we redo all the beams or do we just fix them all individually? I'm just gonna fix them all individually. Mm -hmm. right, let's do the, this one first and then we'll do all the side ones. Right, so the problem with these is that they're all not grouped up still. Because the rest automatically group when we duplicated them. I love the little noises from the capybaras. At least I think that's the capybaras. It might be the anteater. Because I'll admit I've never really listened to the anteater either. Why is it down there? There we go. To be honest, never play plants with sound on. I just have music off. Because I do like... Like, the game has an amazing... Soundscape. Oh, it is the capybara. They make the little peep peep. Uh, yeah, like, when you're like in a big room, everything gets like echoey and... I don't know, I just like the placement sounds. It makes building a lot more satisfying to me. And it helps, like when you're control Zing, you can listen to which pieces are being removed, so you know kind of when to quit, just based on listening. Once I I uh, I control Z'd, and I didn't know what it actually removed, it was actually really cool. Uh, say I place a thing, okay, that's a bad example. Oh. Say so I place a thing over here, and I don't know, like I, I'm doing things and like, uh, I'm doing like whatever, and I start control seeing stuff. I don't know. Oh, what what was that? What am I? What am I? What am I doing? Huh? I don't know. Let me listen. Oh, okay. It's it's over here somewhere. You can hear where it is, right? So that's that's really useful as well, in my opinion. You can listen to where your control Z's are be taking place. <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> this fucking the spectacles are so stupid, but I love it. Super happy with this. Although I will ha say this wall is still a little bit generic. Like I want to do something special with it. Still, I don't know. I wouldn't know what. Really. So, I need a, a staff member up here because, see, I think this is not a great 
height thing that we have going on here. Like, I'm not a fan of the fact that someone with enough dedication could probably just jump up and grab the support beams. I don't like that. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to take the roof and raise it up like half a meter. Which will make everything a little bit less claustrophobic. So let's take this, let's actually add it to the roof, yeah. And let's just to whatever feels right. So something like this, that might be a bit much. Something like this feels about right. So that means that we will also have to raise the building itself, of course. Let's see, is there anything in that group that we should worry about? Doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and zip that up in there. And then all we need to worry about is these things. Is the floor. Make sure that everything is on the floor again. Alright, I'm gonna ignore that part for now because it's a bit of a mess with the cable. And I'm gonna ignore that side of the windows. Actually, I might. I might actually just do this. I think that makes more sense than to have windows there on the floor. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're getting somewhere. Definitely getting somewhere with this. So we would definitely need some support beams here and there. Uh, let's actually look at Madidi again. What's actually this notification that I have? Oh, we have a new subscriber. Thank you, Yort. <laughs> um, all right, so Madidi probably has some kind of support structure. Uh, let's let's see. Do we see any of that in my video or not? Is the question. Of course, we have some climbing frames. Okay, so there's definitely a support beam. So that's right next to the thing. They did hide those pretty well, I'll admit. Uh, let's see if we have some sort of metal... Metal beam, metal girder. We can probably use the Australian ones. Um, I think those will look pretty nice for this purpose. So let's actually have a look at them. And these are the small ones. I kind of want to try the big ones now. So let's say we skip one and we go for this. Then we would need one there and one here. Oh. Mm -hmm. That is problematic. So we would need to move our boat ID to over here about, which means even less space for our tortoises. We can also move it kind of over here. Maybe we can disguise it as some boat element. 
We would no we definitely need to move this path, which is already annoying. Enough. Um Because yeah, otherwise it will be in the habitat, which is also kind of poopy. So yeah, no, we definitely have to put it here, because that makes the most sense, just these two big support beams. Yeah. So I do want to add those, but what shall we do? Maybe a seal or a piece of bamboo coming up through the boat. Yeah. Yeah, that will be fine. Uh, I'm just thinking, like... This is a pretty slim path. And you want to make sure it can it keeps uh, being... Wheelchair accessible. Um, so you can't really put a pull in the middle of the thing. Yeah, the main issue is that I don't want to, like, I don't know, is this too small for an indoor area? If we only have a couple, like, I don't think we'll have, like, I think two or three will be my size, and it will only be for the winter. <laughs> I think it might actually be fine. I think I'm gonna put them up here, and then we'll have to move the path somehow, which will be fun. And I'll make some kind of barrier here as well, and then we'll make something for like frogs or something like that uh, in this corner. Have some, maybe some educational things, something like that. And the tortoises will have not the biggest of spaces, but we could actually <clears throat> imply that they have something under this elevated walkway. That there's like a shelter for them under there. Like we can't actually make it because of how the paths work, but that could be fine. I think that'd be nice. Um... So, yeah. um, so we've got this, let's see if we can make this work at least a little bit, I think that will actually be good. Yeah, that will be fine. Sick. There we go. I'm gonna have to slightly change how the boat is orientated, but we're gonna have to make a completely new boat thing anyway, because this isn't a boat. <laughs> this is a placeholder. So, yeah. Got a little path here, which we'll make into. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Not at all. Oh, kind of hope that would work. Um, eh. I wish I could do the thing that I want to do, but it's not letting me. <laughs> Maybe if I do it like this. Right, messed that up. So close. <laughs> I 
Maybe it's actually this that's obstructing us. There we go. No. No. Yes, that's what I want. And then I want the entrance of this thing kind of over here. It'll be in the middle of these two things. So we'll have no need for you anymore. This will be filled in. There we go. So I want to be a wanted to be a little careful with where I placed the engine. Actually, um, now that this is kind of an empty corner, I think it might actually be better to put the entrance on this side instead. Because then we have a little bit more room for the Cayman viewing. That'll be better. Um, because yeah, I didn't. I wanted to prevent that you come in to a group of people looking at Caymans. So right now, you come in, and if you go to the side, you got the Cayman. If you go to the front, you got the tortoises. And over here, we'll create something neat. I hope. So we can actually go ahead and do something like this. And yeah, that'll be something like that over there. There we go. It's all path it up. Uh, let's have a little temporary path like this. There we go. So, don't need this anymore, because that's all laid out. Oh, actually, we need to change this one still, but we don't need the thing for that anymore. Um, in fact, I think, I think we can just kind of keep this, because there's enough space to go around it. And I was going to make like a rock thing anyway over here. Like, I can try to see if we can get rid of it. No, I don't think I can. So, we'll just keep that and we'll put up a little extra piece of barrier inside of that. And it should prevent people from... Yeah, see, they go around. They go around the pole. So that's perfect. All right. Yeah, they go around the pole. That's so cool. I love barriers. <laughs> okay. So, uh, just get rid of this. And they can go all the way around. So, do we put some guests in the zoo? I don't want, no, because they'll be like hundreds of them. And they'll all swarm to this place because it's the only place with animals. So that will be annoying. And I don't want that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is probably, like I want to keep going and I actually will. Um, but I think I am going to stop streaming because I'm noticing my voice is uh, disappearing. And I have a family breakfast tomorrow for Easter. So um, I think I'm just going to wrap up the stream here. And I'm going to be working on the little boat area. I'm going to be um, probably finishing up the capybara enclosure as well. Putting some little gates in here uh, as well as some twigs and stuff and litter and whatnot um just making it all a little bit more detailed but i really like where this is going 
I'm super, super happy with it so far. So, yeah, I want to thank everyone who's still here for tuning in and everyone who uh, has tuned in as well and everyone who's uh, watching this after the fact. Uh, also, thanks for sitting through it with me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, this, this is a little project. I think I never no mentioned the name, but I'm not happy with the name, so that's why. Uh, for now, it's called Dierhoven, which is like... Eindhoven, but animal hoven. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not quite happy with it yet, but I don't have anything better either. Um, just like I don't have an, a name for any of the regions of my zoo. This is like the South America area. Savannah area. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of consider calling the South America area Mabibi. <laughs> just to make it even more obvious where I got my inspiration from. But, um, yeah, no, um, if you have any name suggestions, feel free to chat them or comment them. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to wrap it up here and I'll see you guys next stream. Once again, don't, no idea when it's going to be, uh, if ever, but if I ever feel like it and, uh, and circumstances, like the stars align for it, then I'll see you guys on another stream. And if not, uh, I'll probably start making videos on this soon as well uh, but that all just depends on time uh, i don't have all the time in the world sadly otherwise i'd be playing a lot more planet zoo that is a bit of a bummer they kind of sink into the ground when looking at the exhibit i should probably raise it a bit to prevent that from happening which we can actually do now that we have our new things oh look at that the iguana is all the way up there damn that's so cool Right, I might actually uninstall the Boxless mod just to see what it's like. Because I don't think we need it necessarily for this. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna go. Thanks to everyone. Bye-bye.